this video explains uh, the critical point and the triple point in phase diagrams. All right, so uh, we're seeing what a phase diagram is. And a phase diagram is just a map of pressure versus temperature in which the most stable phase of a substance, of a substance is plotted. Okay, so for most substances, the way that these diagrams are going to look like is like this. You have here the gas, you're going to have there the solid, and in the middle you're going to have the liquid, and this phase diagram is going to have a shape like this. Uh, we will see how for water there's an important deviation of this general shape uh, in a later video. Okay, we also have explained uh, what the, these uh, phase boundaries are, and uh, we will actually explain that from a thermodynamic perspective also a little bit later on. This video only tells you about two characteristic points of this diagram, which are uh, this and that. This is what we call the triple point, and this is what we call the critical point. Okay, at the triple point, uh, what we have is that there's a coexistence of the three phases. Right, so uh, you have that the gas, the liquid, and the solid can coexist uh, under those conditions. Right, so uh, this is a little bit difficult to imagine because it's something that is not uh, generally seen for many substances. Uh, uh, but you can go online and look for triple point of substances, and you will see that essentially what you have there, if you control the pressure and temp temperature correctly, uh, you will see that uh, it will be the, anal the analog of having a liquid both freezing and boiling at the same time. That's, that's what you observe at the, at the triple point. Now there's a couple of uh, interesting characteristics about the triple point that we are going to study. One of them is that, well, that changes from substance to substance. Okay, so no two substances have the same triple point. Um, then the other thing that is important is that this triple point uh, serves to uh, uh, put a barrier to the liquid phase. Notice that uh, the pressure for the triple point is the lowest pressure at which the liquid can exist. Uh, and the liquid will not be able to exist at a pressure lower than uh, that of the triple point. And also notice that uh, uh, the temperature of the triple point determines the lowest temperature at which the liquid can exist. Okay, notice that if you, uh, uh, there's no liquid phase uh, uh, to the left of this triple point in this uh, temperature graph. When we study water, uh, we will actually see that this second condition, right, that, that the temperature of the uh, triple point determines uh, uh, the lowest temperature of the liquid phase, that actually won't be the case for water, as we will see in a future video. All right, so that is the explanation of the triple point. Uh, what about the critical point? Well, the critical point is interesting because uh, it turns out that when you trace this line, the line of the vapor pressures and boiling points, uh, uh, that line actually finishes at this particular point abruptly which is what we call the critical point. This line does not finish, right? So that we can continue to trace that line until uh, you know, our instrumentation uh, breaks down because we cannot continue to increase uh, the temperature and pressure um, uh, you know, at our will. Okay, but this, this uh, line does uh, stop. And, and, and that's what, when you reach the critical point. All right, so what is, the, uh, what is important or interesting about the critical point? Well, it turns out that this temperature of the critical point is important because that uh, temperature determines the highest temperature at which the liquid can exist, right? So if you have the system uh, at a temperature higher than the, uh, than the critical uh, temperature, then the liquid will never be formed, okay? So let's try to see if we can explain that a little bit better. All right, suppose that you're, for example, in this particular uh, set of pressure and conditions in the diagram. Actually, let's, let's look at this one a little better, okay? That's gonna be a little easier to explain. Well, uh, under this set of uh, pressure and temperature conditions, then what you will have is that the gas is the stable, uh, is the stable phase. Right? What you can do is place this gas inside a cylinder, okay? that will be your gas, and then uh, at constant temperature, apply pressure. Okay? You, so you're simply going to be pushing down uh, this, this cylinder okay? uh, that piston, and eventually what you'll, you'll start seeing is that uh, you're going to be reaching this uh, phase boundary, and eventually you will be able to turn everything into the liquid, right? So as you push this piston down, there's going to be uh, some time, there's going to be an interface between the gas and the liquid being formed, okay, at a, at a particular pressure. Okay, so that's actually something that doesn't happen 
uh, when you are uh, past the critical temperature. Okay, so if you're at this point, and you have exactly the same experiment, you have the gas, and now you push the piston, it turns out that you never see the liquid forming. You never see a boundary between the liquid and the gas being formed, no matter how great the pressure. Right? So you can actually be in this pressure uh, regime and still not observe the liquid. At this point, uh, what you actually have is something that is called a supercritical fluid. Okay? And super, supercritical fluids are something that uh, uh, have a variety of interesting applications. Uh, they behave as gases, okay? So they will occupy uh, the volume of containers, uh, but their density is uh, this entity that is, is similar to that of liquids. Right? So they actually have intermediate properties between uh, gases and liquids, and max that makes them uh, very attractive. Okay, so uh, the critical point also changes from substance to substance, and uh, for example, for water, uh, the temperature of the critical point will be about 647 Kelvin, which is very high, and the pressure will be about 218 atmospheres, which is also quite high. But for other substances, like for example CO2, it turns out that the critical temperature for CO2 is only 304 Kelvin. Okay? And this pressure happens to be uh, about 73 atmospheres, which is not very high. All right, so then what turns out here is that, well, this, this actually is the temperature that you get on a warm day, right? That in Fahrenheit corresponds to about 88 degrees or so. Okay, so it turns out that if you have uh, a liquid CO2 or gas CO2 and the day is high, you actually have, can have something that is called a supercritical fluid. And I actually have an example of that. Uh, this would be uh, a little bit of, of uh, uh, what a supercritical fluid might look like. Okay, so in, this, uh, in the cylinder, uh, the manufacturer will have CO2 in, uh, inside, and I use this to pump the tires of my bicycle when I get a flat out in the road. Uh, and what you actually have here is about 16 grams of um, uh, CO2 packed in a really small volume. And, and the manufacturer claims that when they actually pack it in, this is a liquid. But notice that on a hot day, 88 degrees, what you will actually have is that, well, you will be past the critical point, and this will actually be a supercritical fluid, okay? Which, again, turns out that it's, it's not difficult to get for CO2 for water. Other substances, this is much harder to get, but for CO2, uh, uh, that's not. And it turns out that, again, supercritical critical CO2 is, is, has really good solvent properties, and this is used in the industry quite a bit. Okay, so uh, supercritical super CO2 is used for the extraction of organic substances from mixers. For example, the decaffeination of coffee is actually done by passing supercritical CO2 through, through ground coffee beans or through coffee beans, and then uh, that actually is going to extract caffeine from them and you get decaf coffee. Uh, uh, supercritical super, super CO2 is now used in green chemistry because notice that if this is simply CO2, it's not uh, particularly toxic. Uh, and it, it's actually a really good solvent in organic reactions. Furthermore, uh, there's some startup companies that are actually trying to use supercritical super CO2 as a solvent for dry cleaning, uh, as opposed to using the, uh, the nasty solvents that are currently used when, when you go to the dry cleaners. Okay, so again, supercritical super critical fluids have interesting applications, and again, that, has, uh, that stems from the fact that they have properties intermediate between gases and liquids, and it turns out that for CO2, you can actually uh, reach the critical point very easily. Again, you can actually have here an example uh, uh, of a system in which, uh, on a warm day, you will actually have the supercritical fluid inside uh, this container.